So Subnautica 2 has been revealed and it has a lot to live up to, with the original game Subnautica 1.0 being released way back in 2018 and becoming an absolute cult classic, for it to then be followed up by the spin-off game Subnautica Below Zero in 2021, which was definitely a lot less of a success story in the eyes of most people. It is safe to say that Subnautica 2 has some very big boots to fill. It's releasing into early access sometime in 2025, and these are a few of the things that I think the game needs to avoid another Below Zero situation. The first thing I want to talk about is horror, and I put this in the thumbnail for a very specific reason because I think it's one of the most important things that Subnautica 2 really needs to get right. Whether it was the creature designs, the wide open empty spaces, the really dark crevices, the sound and music design, whatever it was, there was horror in the bones of Subnautica 1 and I think they really lost a lot of that, especially with creature design, quest design and the way that they structured everything around the main character in Below Zero. It really did feel like a step back in terms of horror and I think half the reason that YouTubers flocked to Subnautica in the first place and gave it that initial boost of popularity was because of the scary factors because there were good jump scares there there were good creature designs good scares and I think that really added a lot of personality to what could have just been another generic survival game now the music and sound design is something that's so important when it comes to horror how many of us know that we will never forget the sound of that reaper leviathan roar in the distance it gives you pure fear and chills down to your bones just because you know that something scary is just out there beyond what you can see that kind of sound design was really lost especially in below zero when the creatures were just super loud no matter how close or far away they were from you. And especially music as well, even though there is barely anything in the blood kelp biome that can actually hurt you, just because of the music alone, that place is terrifying. Not to mention there are so many sound effects built into that space that really creep you out. So honestly, when it comes to Subnautica 2, I think they really need to go hard on the fear factor. I think they really need to be okay with scaring the audience. I know the devs said that they stepped away from horror intentionally during Subnautica Below Zero's development, but I really think if they want to get back to the magic of Subnautica 1, they do need to lean back into that horror element quite a bit because it's where it got part of its identity from. So if the devs can just not hold back in that area, the whole game doesn't have to be horror. There can be some beautiful parts, there can be some chill parts, but if they do have parts of the game where it does not hold back in terms of horror, I think that'll bring new life into what Below Zero really lost. And to kind of keep that train of thought going in terms of horror, I think that the game needs something that I wouldn't usually recommend for most games, but I think this game needs a mascot. And what I mean by a mascot is if you look at a game like Five Nights at Freddy, they've got Freddy Fast. Bear. He's a mascot for the series. You know exactly who he is the second you see him. I think it's kind of silly and not really a good thing in most video games, especially horror games. I think, again, whether intentional or not, the Reaper Leviathan became a mascot for the first Subnautica game, but in the right way. Because the whole game doesn't focus on just the Reaper Leviathan, but the Reaper was so iconically designed, both in its physical design and its audio design, I think it became a mascot by the people's choice. And I think if they could capture that lightning in a bottle again, make a creature that is so terrifying, but awesome at the same time, really unique and different, I think they could truly get some of that magic back from Subnautica 1 to bring it in to Subnautica 2 and get some people flocking around that and making videos about just that thing, making lore videos, ideas, all that kind of stuff. It'll be really, really fun. Another thing I'd really love to see them focus on is just plain exploration. I feel like in Below Zero, because of the way that the story was told with a protagonist that told you where to go and Alan in your head telling you, check this out, check that out, blah, 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 blah. I felt like you were never really exploring things for yourself. When looking at gameplay side by side without any audio involved, you can actually see that the way that you explore in Subnautica Below Zero is just as organic and almost the same as Subnautica 1. But I genuinely think it's because of that focus on the storytelling through the first person perspective and having your player speak, you lose a lot of the feeling of you actually discovering things yourself. And because of that, we're naturally detached from the story more and the exploration more because we don't feel like we're finding things, we feel like the main character is finding things, not us. Whereas everything you found and you discovered and you explored in the first Subnautica game felt like you were finding it for the first time yourself, like you were the first person to ever experience this. And so I think they need to go really hard on exploration in this game, but in the right way. They need to allow you to naturally go and explore things. Yeah, you can put a few markers here and there like they did in the first game, but allow a majority of the map to be explored organically and naturally. Have some nice leading architecture that leads you to go and explore something in the distance or some leading lines that tell you, hey, this thing looks important, go check that out. Rather than having a character say, hey, that looks important, I'm going to go check it out. And this kind of leads me into my next point of the game, which is really the story of the game. In the first Subnautica game, you had the opportunity to take the story at face value, to be like, cool, I'm here, I'm going to cure myself, I'm going to build a rocket, I'm going to get off the planet. Or you had the opportunity to dive as deep as you 
you wanted to, no pun intended, via voice logs, via exploration, via all those things, you could go as deep as you wanted to into the story and really uncover some cool and awesome things. Whereas I do feel like in Below Zero, we really lost a lot of that magic because of how the story was told to us. We were told exactly what we should think, what we should feel, how we're going to do this, how we're going to do that. It really didn't leave anything up to the player. And I think if they're going to succeed with the story in Subnautica 2, they really have to put it in the background if that makes sense. I don't want the story to not be focused on or to not be big or expansive. It really needs to be something that appears to be surface level. But if you actually dig a little bit deeper, you can find some true, true gold in there. Just a quick little interruption. If you're enjoying this content, maybe leave the video a like. If you want to stick around, maybe subscribe to the channel as well. I make content like this all the time and I have a lot of fun with it. I also live stream at twitch.tv forward slash this games. So I'll see you there. When exploring the world of Subnautica 1, the vastness of it all, how big and expansive it is, where it feels like there are endless oceans in any direction, you truly feel like the world stops where you stop. Obviously, there is the ecological dead zone and you can't go past that, but more in terms of how the world is designed, it feels so much bigger than it actually is. Whereas you contrast that with Subnautica Below Zero, the world feels smaller than it actually is because everything is compact and claustrophobic and it just doesn't feel very good to be a part of that world, especially with some of the transitions and things like that. It's all just a little bit muddy and wasn't executed fantastically. I really think in Subnautica 2, if they're going to take this world to the next level, it needs to be expansive in a whole new way. It needs to have those vast, deep areas where you cannot see the bottom, the world needs to feel huge. Especially with the addition of co-op, you can cover the map so much quicker if there are multiple people. Now I mentioned co-op there for a moment, but I really do think the devs need to focus on having a solo experience first and foremost with this game. As someone who absolutely loves co-op games and absolutely thrives in a co-op environment, I know for a fact Subnautica thrives in the solo experience. It thrives when you feel isolated, when you feel like you're the only person around, and when you feel like no one is there to help you. Now don't get me wrong, I think co-op is going to be fantastic. I can't cannot wait to play co-op with my friends. But you bet that I want that isolation, terrifying feeling when I'm playing a horror underwater survival experience like Subnautica is supposed to be. So I've got two things to finish off, and the first one is evolving the gameplay. I really do think that Subnautica Below Zero had many opportunities to properly evolve the gameplay, but with it now kind of being confirmed as a DLC, considering this game is called Subnautica 2, I can give it a little bit more forgiveness for how it didn't really evolve too much outside of like a snow fox and a few things like that. But if we're going into to Subnautica 2 and if this game's in a whole new engine and it's got a whole new vision for it, we need some evolution of gameplay. I've been hearing some rumors that there's a new DNA splicing tool that's going to give you the ability to splice two different creatures together and make a whole new creature. If that is actually coming to the game, that is going to be some next level stuff, but it also gives me so much hope. If that's the direction the devs are taking it in, I'm so excited for some of the surprises that they have in store for us. I actually want to see ecosystems as well, not just simulated ones like in Subnautica 1 where it made you feel like the world was alive. I want to see the world actually actually be alive. I really want to see that taken to a space where we really do feel like we're living in this new world with these new creatures and this new fauna and all of those amazing things. Subnautica 1 was such a fantastic evolution of this survival genre. I really do have hope that they're going to evolve it even further with Subnautica 2 and make something that is truly, truly incredible and I cannot wait to see it. And finally, the best one to finish it off on, this is something that is just something I really want to see. It does not make or break the game or anything like that, but I just want to see a stupid big Leviathan. I want to see a Leviathan that is so stupidly big like the gargantuan leviathan that is going to keep me shaken in my boots for a long time to come. I want something that actually makes me fear the ecological dead zone. I want to see a leviathan so big that it crashes games. I want to see a leviathan so big that it looks like the earth is moving underneath you. I want to see some crazy big monsters that have crazy awesome interactions. I want to see some really cool stuff like that. And so those are my thoughts on Subnautica 2 and what I really hope it brings to the table. If you enjoyed this video, please leave it a like, maybe even subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content, and I will see you in the next one.